Hey, what's up? I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. This is where I talk about everything that went down in my musical and artistic journey in life for the last week and more sometimes. Um, this is verge episode 169. Here we go. Intro. I just did that. That was my intro. Um, my second thing to talk about is my jam of the week. I got Beth Orton this week. So I downloaded So she released an album like a year ago, maybe. Um, and I actually downloaded it at the same time that I downloaded the Chemical Brothers last week and stuff, but I hadn't had a chance to really sink my teeth in, or like nothing popped out yet at me, but um, over the last week, um, a song did pop out. Like I was like, oh, okay, that's the song. And it was, it's called Moon off of the Beth Orton CD, which is, I don't remember what the name of the album is. Just, it's something kids maybe? Let's look it up real quick. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Kid Sticks, Kid Sticks is the name of the album. So check it out if you want. Listen to some. Beth Orton's one of my faves. She's been around a while. I discovered her like whew, a long time ago. Out of high school. She had um what was the album? Trailer Park with uh I can't remember the hit song or whatever the song that was on. But uh 107 103.7 The Mountain in Seattle. I used to listen to that all the time. And uh that's where I discovered her music the first time. But now the mount that is 103.7 is not the same kind of station anymore. But anyways, uh, so let's keep rolling on. I had Word on the Street, I had Quiet on the podcast. Um, great having them on. I didn't listen to the whole episode again. I've just been, haven't had the time to listen back. I've been too busy with stuff, which I'll talk about later on in this video. But I've just been crazy busy. Uh, with stuff, just, oh, just trying to live, work, but it was good. One of the things I will say, some behind the scenes about it, um, behind the scenes was that it got socially interacted with pretty darn good, pretty darn good, maybe not quite as good as the Scott McKinley one, but pretty good. Download numbers are about the same as always. I don't get a lot of, I mean, it's just not something that's, I don't know, it's an interesting, I'm in an interesting relationship with my podcast. I love doing it. I want to keep doing it. But it's just, it's like, it's like not really, people are not that interested in it um, yet. So, in my theory, what I'm gambling on is the fact that it's going to be more of a long-term um, appreciation than an immediate appreciation. And I've been talking about it a lot. Like, I think in 10 to 15, 20 years from now, People will look back and be like, what was the scene like? They'll see, and then they'll be like, oh my god, we're on the street. It's an archive, what the scene was like. So, um, keep on keeping on. Ugh, we can do it. So, a couple of things. I'm going to go, so I'll just mention right now, because um, it's kind of weird. It's an idea I want to bring up about the podcast, but I'll mention right now. Next week is Woodshed, so check it out. So, or the coming up is Woodshed. I was going next week, but this videos released in the week of the next podcast but anyways so if you remember so if you've been following along hopefully some of you have been the um i've been changing up my intros they're much longer i don't really care about the length but the ideas i'm bringing up are what i think are valuable points to consider when you really want to move forward with your music career and it's a journey together it's like it is advice but at the same time, it's advice that I am applying by doc. I'm like documenting my advice. I'm saying, this is what I think needs to happen. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm working toward. Let's do it together and see if we're right. You know, kind of. Um, and I think I'm right. I, I feel super duper confident I'm right. So I brought up the social media idea around it. And it was very kind of a surfacey because social media, I probably spent a few intros on specifics about social media. What I've been learning, because I, I listen to, I'm, I'm trying to consume a lot of ideas around how to use social media and the best practices and all that stuff. And it reminded me that a few weeks ago, something I forgot to mention, when Honey Mustard was on, in their podcast, the very beginning of it, Erin mentioned she, Erin Ray mentioned something about having a platform that allowed you to publish um, to multiple like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook all at once. And they do have those programs. One of them is called Hootsuite. 
However, I am personally not an advocate of using them because if you when you get when you really get into it, when you really when your audience starts to accept you on a platform, they will recognize quickly you're taking a shortcut because each platform has a very specific way to use it and a certain cadence. It's like each platform essentially has its own dialect and you can recognize if you're using the wrong, if you're not from the area in a way. So and a couple of examples is, an easy example is the hashtags, like how you use hashtags. Facebook is just not a platform that hashtags really are relevant. People use them for jokes and different things, but people don't really search for hashtags on Facebook. However, on Instagram and Twitter, Twitter, the hashtags are super important. If you want any kind of reach out of anything you're doing, you want to put hashtags on them. So those are things to consider. Um, that's just one example. Just how the cadence and tone and how much words you use and all the different kind of things matter on the different platforms. So basically just what I'm saying is be careful if you decide to use one one of those services that blast out all your social media with the same thing because once your audience starts to get established on one platform they recognize you're taking shortcuts and it, it becomes less in, in genuine. Something I'm going to talk about now while I'm thinking about it and I'm going to bring this up probably on this is probably going to be my topic for next the beginning of next um, podcast um, in sense of audience. So it's like all that you work, do all this work with social media and what I've been recognizing is it's really hard to grow an audience when you don't have an audience. If you are, if you have an audience, learning how to leverage that audience to your other platforms and different things is super important but it but it means like that's why celebrities have an easier game at growing their audience because they already have an audience it's it's really hard to grow your audience from nothing why i'm telling you that i'm not exactly sure i'll spend more time thinking about it as time goes on but it's just an idea that comes up because a lot of the things that i listen to and consume i think are targeted toward the person that already has somewhat of an audience and finding your audience it's all about finding your audience, really, with your music, with anything you're doing. And I'm going to talk about more, more of that, that in a second. But let's get into the music. Um, finding your, I'm going to write it down, finding audience, finding audience, and my chicken scratch. Um, let's get into the, what's going on in music. So I've realized l lately that more and more, and I've talked about this already so many times, I've realized more and more that my online representation for what I am and capable of through music is shit. Boom. Two thumbs down. Everything, I mean, I don't have a great representation of what I do solo. I don't have a great representation of the band. I don't have good audio. I don't have good video. I don't, it's like the more I think about it, the more, and, I, and I, as I look back, like, all the time I spent in Seattle with the Zimini Rock, I'm going like, oh my god, why did I, why was I so blind to this while I was, had the more, I don't know, had a different the band was there, and it's like, so, basically, because it's like, something's come up, like, I'm gonna, I'm trying to start up my own, I mean, it's a little better with the Zim and A Rock, but still, it's not the greatest, like, there's a bunch of videos on this channel of the band, and there's just, audio is not that great, I mean, some videos look good, but sound crappy, and some videos sound better, but don't look so good, and just different things like that, it's just like, oh my god, how can I make this happen, how can I find out a way to, to get better representation with limited time and money and it's just kind of that's the struggle so we'll figure it out together shall we um the uh, but what it, how it really confronted me is like i'm trying to put together something that i can now start playing shows by myself and basically i'm doubling i'm i'm thinking about my strengths what are my strengths and you know i have this vision one of the things that held me up for a while in terms of wanting to play now, like in the current state I'm at right now, is because the vision I have is I'd love to do more of like basically what I do with the Zim and A Rock, but solo. Like have the laptop going, have more going, and just have more produced stuff, and just like have these kicking shows, lots of bass, and all this kind of stuff. But what I just the work it takes to build up to that is a lot more than I have time for really. And what I have available to me right now is my guitar and myself, and 
and I know I'm really good at that coffee shop setting. I'm, and so I'm like, you know what? I like playing music, and I'm good at that setting. I engage the audience. The audience is really receptive. I need to do that. I need to go for that. So I was like, okay, now what do I need to do? I know that now. What do I need to do? And thinking about it, like, oh, I have, I don't have anything that represents me, and I want to make sure that when I'm playing shows, I have a, something that people can take home with them, like a, a recording of what they just heard in a way. So I got all these pieces to figure out. So it's like, first thing is like, I need something in a way that represents me to to help me book shows and things like that. And I'm piecing together things. It's not perfect, but I'm trying to make it happen. But one of the top things I need to figure out is how to get a video of me singing one of my songs that sounds good, that looks good, that people will be like, okay, I take this guy seriously. So that's up on the list. The next thing I really need to do is I'm going to make a three song recording EP CD of me and I'll probably end up doing it myself right here I was hoping to kind of get help with it but I don't think I can afford it so I'm just gonna do it myself and fingers crossed I can make something that sounds good and represents me as good as I think I know I'm capable of so but the reason I want to do that is to have it but also when I'm at shows I don't want to play a show unless I have a fully stocked merch box um, shirts CDs you know, mailing this, everything looking good, just, you know, I'm going to get a smaller box than the one I used to use, but that's kind of what's going on with that. So that's where I'm at with my own personal journey right now. I got some things to put together, but I'm hopefully going to uh, be getting out there playing shows on my own to get it going, to start networking, to make things happen, because I still, my ultimate goal is to take the Zimini Rock on tour. And I'm trying to build. What do I need to do to build toward that? One of the things I definitely need to do is just be out there playing more often because it's important to me. So that's what's going on um, with that. I still have the Zimmy Era. We're still, uh, still working on the three songs. They're out with the producer. I've been sending him money. So he's got the money. I've just been, we've been emailing a little bit. So there's three songs for the Zimmy Eric are happening. I'm going to start recording three songs on my own. I still have my one song news, yeah, like new songs, one new song a month that I'm working on. I've had, I haven't had a chance or time to, I haven't really had time, and just situational has been kind of tight to get some vocals. Basically, I just need to put vocals on one song to have one out. One song I sent out to a producer, which I haven't heard back from, so that's back on the drawing board to see what to do with that because I don't really, I don't. I'm not feeling I have the energy to push it to the next level, so I have to figure out how to get somebody to help me with that. Um, and that's what's going on. I wanted to, so that's what's going on with the music stuff. If you have any questions around it, feel free to ask me um, what's going on with life stuff. So what's been going on with life. So last, I wanted to kind of rewind a little bit and just document a moment for you and for Orion, my son, and for myself. Um, and to keep it real with what I'm trying to do here because last week I realized I held back um, something I wanted to mention because my kids were here and they're at school right now. Today is the first day of school and I just didn't feel comfortable talking about it in that moment but I want to talk about it now because if you remember I went to see the Seahawks right there. Seahawks play in um, LA against the Chargers and I wanted to tell you about the experience of it. And it was, it was fun, it ended up being awesome, but there was a moment that got tricky. And it was because I totally forgot about the fact that it was loud in the stadium and my son is not a big fan of loudness. And it almost, and I was so, he gets really sensitive to the loudness and I forgot to bring headphones and earplugs and I scoured the entire um, stadium. I went to every like team shop and customer service thing and um, just the medical people and nobody had like those phone any kind of earplugs so and it was pretty frustrating and I personally I mean yes I should have planned ahead and at the same time I think it's pretty weird that an event like that somewhere in the stadium they wouldn't have a bowl full of earplugs it just seems I don't know, it seems strange to me. So, I don't know. I'm just going to put that out there. But anyways, it got to a point where I got pretty upset and ready. I was ready to leave if we needed to. The game hadn't even started yet, and I was like, 
ready to leave. I was upset, not like angry upset. I was just kind of upset at the moment, at the situation. And I found out, so as I was searching for the earplugs, I found out that Orion was also upset because he did not want to have to leave because he knew I was excited about it. And so, because then also he knew how much money I spent on the tickets and he was feeling very self-conscious about it. He knew he was uncomfortable, but he was also, you know, working with, um, knowing he's aware enough to know that I, you know, there's just, he was aware enough of the situation and to, to know it was just a issue, a thing. There was a thing there. And luckily, he toughed it out for me, I guess. And, and luckily, once the game started, the overall volume got a lot lower because they had the music blaring and cans going off and all the stuff before the game. So it was just kind of a, a moment that I wanted to share with you and with Orion and myself. For the future to know that that's life that's the way it happened and i'm really thankful that it worked out for all of us um, but it was tough it was definitely tough i was you know on the verge of tears because it's like part of this where i'm at right now in life it's like i'm working really hard to make it all happen make it all work out be there for my kids be there for myself be there for my family be there for you know the whole situation and balancing it all out can be stressful sometimes. So that's my story right now. Um, the last thing I want to mention, I have like three minutes left, is I thinking about this whole thing that I'm working on. I'm really excited about what's happening with this YouTube channel. I know it's very, it's so early to be that excited, but I'm excited because I've gotten like five videos on this channel have broken a thousand views, which is really good for me. My subscriber number keeps going up. Every day I get a new subscriber and they're mostly attributed to the lift videos and probably a little bit to the product review video I've talked about before for the Behringer new interface that I got. Unfortunately, well, so, so thinking about that, I like making these videos. It's super fun. I like the channel. I like the idea of it. I wish I was got the same kind of interaction to those things, the lift videos, I wish I got the same kind of interaction I get with that with the music, the video journals, the podcasts, but I don't. So it's like, I do enjoy the video making process and I do enjoy that. It's just unfortunate that it has to be through being a Lyft driver in a way um, because it's like, I don't like it that much, but I like what's happening because of it. So I'm just going to double down in a way on or triple down or just go all in on the whole Lyft thing. I made another video on this channel about my like five star rating kind of video about ideas around ratings again. And I'm realizing there's a couple of things, ratings and how much money you make are two big topics that Lyft, the Lyft community really wants to know about. So I'm gonna try to find more ways, how many ways can I talk about my, my ratings and how much money you make without being churning out the same thing over and over. I'm just gonna figure out how to do these short videos and things like that. So just wanna keep you up to date on what's going on. And then also probably more I'm gonna find other things to talk about. I can't really, the product review thing costs money to create, so I don't buy that much stuff, so I won't be able to do that. But what I have available to me right now is just my experience with Lyft. So I'm gonna double down on it, put more videos out about it, and see how much I can leverage that to generate more interest in this channel. And hopefully, it'll cross pollinate some of the music and podcast stuff and help everything grow a little bit. So, all right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, oh, See, there was something I was going to come back to, um, but I can't read it. <laughs> and now that my brain's all um, gone, well, we'll just have to get back to it next week when I will watch the video again, and I'll talk about it next week. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. If you have any questions for me, hit it up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to give this channel a thumb, this video a thumbs up and give the channel a subscription. And then, um, yeah. Peace.